Russia. I have completely lost getting to this spot today. These woods I have walked a million times. Uh, you've seen it across the videos. Finally found a spot where I wanted to be today, but I had to go all around the houses, which leads me perfectly on to uh, a viewer's question, a number of viewers' questions. I didn't think it required a video, but I've been asked so many times over the last few weeks, what does it feel like when you blend with spirit? I don't think I'm doing it right. That's gonna be what we're talking about in this video. As I said, I didn't think this needed a uh, video, but uh, the viewers have, uh, uh, have made me wrong uh, because I've been asked so many times and I want to go over the process of what it feels like when you're connecting with your team, your guides, whatever. Uh, the process was something that was very confusing early on for me, um, but I learned very quickly that we're not all the same and we're gonna do things slightly differently. Uh, and in this video, we're gonna cover the, the different aspects uh, that you may come across while developing. So in the last week, maybe, I've had three people message my social media, whether it be Facebook, whether it be the YouTube, saying I'm, I'm told my, my teachers are telling me that it should be fast and it should be buzzy. Um, and it's just not like that for me. Am I, am I doing something wrong? Uh, and, and no, you're not doing anything wrong. It's just your way of, uh, of working. And what we've got to get into our heads maybe, is that these things are very unique for us as individuals and the process will be completely different for every single person. So the problem we have in general is that teachers of mediumship or of spiritual development think their way is the only way or the right way. And so if someone is very sentient and they feel something very vibrant about their awareness, or their calling card, they know the spirit world's there because it's fast paced and it feels kind of buzzy, they'll go on to teach that. And they forget that everyone's different. If you're working with someone that's heavily clairvoyant, uh, they're gonna be waiting for a visual, maybe a visual calling card, something visual because it's a strong point of clairvoyance, not clairsentience. Something else we have to consider is that if you are working for the spirit world and you're doing readings, that is going to be very different to the sensory experience that we have when sitting in the power for spirit. One, one is your awareness, you're searching, you're taking up mind space for any kind of change and you're trying to find your sweet spot and that takes a development in itself. When you're working for the spirit world, you're trying to free up the mind uh, from looking for such calling cards, etc. I'll try and explain that a little bit more in depth. If you are preparing yourself to work, you've got a client, you're gonna do a reading, and your mind is occupied with like, I can't feel it buzzing, I can't feel the vibrancy. That is a part of your mind that you are using up that the spirit world would normally use during that time of the read. You're too busy searching for and if you're not finding a buzz or a vibrancy there, um, you, you, you'll go into panic mode. And because you're in panic mode, you're stepping further and further away from that of the spirit world. There is way too many teachings out there that are teaching people uh, to go into dilution. Uh, it, it's a mind thing, uh, communicating with the spirit world. If your intent is correct, uh, and you know the spirit world are joining you, you are offering a freer space uh, for them to work with you. Uh, it will be much easier than doing all these double double checks that uh, you, you find yourself doing. We've got to try and make it natural. And in that natural, uh, you'll find that your readings will go much, much better. So to the viewers that are asking me, Charlie, what should it feel like? What does it feel like? What is it I'm doing wrong? I don't think you're doing anything wrong. I think if there's anywhere that it's gonna go wrong is when you're thinking too much on the process. Um, as I said to you before, I think it's one of those things that 
I spent way too long listening to other people and it, it should be like this or it should be like that. Uh, and in the end, I just got frustrated and did it my way anyway. It's the same process as someone saying, oh, I see a man guide with you. Uh, he looks like a priest. And then you spend sort of six months looking for a priest that was never there. So I think, I think the, the, the best thing you can do is gauge it on your accuracy. If you're doing readings and you offer a freer space, you're gonna get more accuracy. Um, and then that will be your normal, your feeling, what it is that you need to be doing when connecting to the spirit world. There is no right or wrong here. It's, it's a personal relationship that we share with the spirit world, a unique relationship that we share with the spirit world. And I think once you develop that uniqueness and put aside the jargon and the rubbish that goes with it, uh, I think you'll find a, a sense of freedom, a sense of inspiration, hopefully, and you can conduct your readings and your relationship a little bit more on your terms. So I'm gonna wrap this one up here. I'm gonna try and get another one recorded. Love these woods. Um, so for this video, I'll wrap this one up here. And I'll see you all in the next one.